Uh, our next speaker is the very formidable David Williams. He's Vice Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Postal Service, who is a longtime Postal Service Inspector General. David's career has taken him from Vietnam to Iran to the Secret Service and is the IG for five different federal agencies. David, we're looking forward to your remarks as always. Thank you. It's great to see you all. This is a very nostalgic day for me. Uh, no one would shake hands just like when I was the Inspector General. <laughs> <laughs> What's important to mention is these are not uh, postal announcements. Uh, these are the views of, of one of the, uh, the postal governors, and uh, there, there's a, quite a difference. We were still in the midst of a lot of decisions. The Postal Service was um, intentionally, singularly placed in the Constitution 250 years ago to be a public infrastructure, and the definition of that um, is to do things together that would be ridiculous to try to do singularly, try everyone to do for themselves. But we do need to periodically update what, universal, what the universal service obligation means at a, at a time when the digital age and globalism are still opening. We're, we're at the kind of the end of the beginning of that process. Customers and citizens uh, have changing needs. The postal service needs to be agile and adaptive with its infrastructure. We need to bend toward the future rather than to crack and, and splinter from rigidity. Uh, next, the Postal Service was intended to be a break-even value proposition, enabling its users and the public to have strong American supply and value chains, not cheapened by excessive prices on anyone's part, but ours as well. The Postal Service was later designed to set the market rate for parcels and to assure that customers have a level playing field. You should be really thankful that the Postal Service does that. Um, the Postal Service is a natural check on irresistible urges of successful companies and urging moving toward monopoly. The entry of the Postal Service in the parcel shipping business was at the turn of the century and ended a horrifying practice of imposing monopolistic shipping rates on commerce, showing extreme favoritism and discrimination against entrepreneurs and new entrants and small businesses. The fact that we're here instantly, overnight, corrected that. Next, I know you heard a lot about our finances. You have and you are hearing a lot about them. Uh, we, we broke even for about 250 years, I think, as you know, sometimes even better than breaking even. But had we made profits, it would have been at your expense. We would have, take, we would have taken money from you, as it sometimes happened, and, uh, and taken it for ourselves. So our marching orders were for a, um, for a break-even proposition for Americans. Very recently, we did lose some money. In the beginning, uh, until very recently, it was because of the sudden to one That can't be the end of the story, the exhaust and the fuel waste urban congestion, danger in your neighborhood, strange strangers who are very strange coming up onto your porch that haven't been very well vetted. This can't, this won't go on. But we do have to wait for it to play out. When we play it out, we're gonna be beautifully positioned as some of the speakers have said. We also need to march toward the standardization of our modes of delivery, the mailbox. Uh, billions could be saved if we would just place the mailboxes in, in the same position. Uh, and as a backup, of course, we have cluster boxes where, you, where that's not reasonable because of security concerns. We have over 250,000 platforms, post offices and trucks, that could become part of the Internet of Things, gathering lots of badly needed data for now and for the future smart cities. Um, and we also, those could also be platforms for aerial, that would create an umbrella for fast Internet. It's disgraceful, the fact that we invented all of these things with the internet and we don't have fast internet in this country, not as fast as, as in other countries that are far behind us economically. Those could be the same platforms, a quarter of a million, every neighborhood, every door. And we could offer concierge services that were mentioned. Um, 
to help bring, bring about a rural renaissance as it matters less and less where did you work. You're not working in offices, you're working in your home. And to extend the period of independent living for challenged citizens and, and elderly citizens. Um, so that's the first and the middle and the final mile. Those, some fairly subtle changes would make a dramatic, dramatic difference. Lexington posed some interesting questions. Uh, should, we, should we lock in the USL? What does it mean to have a universal service obligation? The PRC's done a lot of the heavy lifting already. We've, they developed the factors that should be considered, and now we just need to plug in decisions for each of the factors. I thank them, and they did a great job. But we also need to learn, as, as has already been said, what America wants. And understanding fully the cost to them for it. Uh, taxpayer liabilities, taxpayer bailout, that is puzzling. I, we've never asked for one. I don't think we would welcome a taxpayer bailout with all the controls of where, with this. People have asked, companies have asked for bailouts in, in this industry, never us. Would the economic downturn be bad? Yeah, the de economic downturn would be bad. But over the last 250 years, we've, we've seen every flavor of economic condition, and we know a lot. So we can, we can ride this out as the, other, as the other good industries do. What about the Treasury report? Pretty good. Um, it called for public-private partnerships. Really, really nice. But we don't want to be in a bull in a china shop. I'm not sure those analysts understood that the people that would be pulled out of the system, dumped at the curb, aren't going to be the evil federal employees. It's going to be small businesses. Those are our partners. They are everywhere shot through the place as a result of outsourcing and a result of work sharing. Um, so what, do we really want a single big business to cast out tens of thousands of small businesses? We, we need to take it into consideration. It's a great idea. Don't be a bull in the china shop. A huge price increase, there's a bad idea. The, uh, it might, it might be good for some, it would be a windfall for some tiny number, but it would crush e-commerce and it would harm our citizens. And it clearly, clearly isn't worth it. The, do we have a liquidity price crisis? Um, something doesn't change, we do. You heard all about it. We borrowed $15 billion from the Treasury to put inside our funds, our pre-fund, this wonderful pre-fund you've heard so much about. And we've only been able to pay back four. The Treasury seems they want it back. They're out of patience. I'm thinking we give it back. I'm not sure it was a great idea to borrow it in the first place. It's like putting your mortgage on your credit card. It was just a bad call. Let them have that back out of the fund. Liquidity, we have, we have eight billion. Uh, we might need more if a Katrina or a Maria or a 9-11 or any black swan hits us. We've got to throw everything we have at it. So that may require that we borrow some during the year. I would suggest that uh, that ought to be the fund who we're actually borrowing it from anyway. Erase all of that piping. The interest payments shouldn't be going to the Treasury. They should be going to our retirees. We need to get the middlemen, the government middlemen especially, out of the process. What can we learn from other world posts? I loved your presentation. You did a great job. It was completely wrong, but it was really <laughs> No, it wasn't. It was really it was wonderful. We need to enable post office diversification. Over 50% of the world post income now comes from non-postal products in their post offices. Pricing freedom, we invented it. I think we're the last one not doing it. Uh, limited, uh, we in the United States. Um, <coughs> Europe does have a smaller USO program, but that probably because they have much, much less mail. People love mail here. And it enables us to deliver all kinds of USO assurances and prices. Uh, very high prices that you find in Europe, um, I think that's a terrible idea. It cheapens our supply chains. It drives our nation backward instead of forward. Um, and it takes profits from the people that use the Postal Service. We don't want that. We want, we want them to profit from it. We don't want to give high bills to, to individuals either. Uh, they don't pre-fund. What an odd decision. They don't pre-fund. 
and they don't load it onto customer bills. They don't say, we would we want you to give us $300 billion before, uh, before you send the first letter. That, uh, I think that was a very wise decision. That's all I have for you today. Out of breath, out of time. Thank you.